So now we can kind of summarize everything up and look at the different metamorphic environments in which metamorphism happens. So as you can see, there's quite a few um, environments, and we're going to take a look at each one and the effects that they have on the rocks. What I really want you to pay attention to is whether the rock is going to be foliated or non-foliated as a result. So either whether the effects are going to be temperature driven or pressure driven. So the first type is our contact metamorphism, which happens around our igneous intrusions. So here you can see down here we have our igneous intrusion, which of course it's going to be hot. So it's going to be giving off heat here, which again remember that heat might not be enough to melt the rock around it, but it could be enough to metamorphose it. And remember, this is where we form our horn fells. Now, when we talked about our igneous rock, we called this the baked zone. But the actual term for this area where the horn fells form is called the aureole. Okay, so that's your technical term there. And of course, it should withstand to reason that if you're really close to the igneous intrusion, you're going to have a higher grain horn fell, so a higher density, right? It's going to be much more altered than a rock that's much further away from that igneous intrusion. So of course these rocks are the ones that are getting altered by temperature, so hopefully it stands to reason that you recognize that this is a non-foliated metamorphic environment. Burial metamorphism is literally exactly what it states. This is kind of what happens a lot to the stable continent. That material is just burying older material over time. So, of course, we see, actually, this is your middle of the road, an increase in temperature and in pressure, right, over the course of time. So, this can produce our foliated metamorphic rocks. Dynamic metamorphism is what occurs in shearing zones. So, this is what's happening in the San Andreas. We take a rock and pull the top of it one way and the bottom of it another way. This will actually stretch out some of those rocks. So at the upper levels of um, a transform boundary in the shearing zone, the rocks are just going to kind of get pulverized and break apart. But in the lower levels, they're going to stretch out like taffy. And you can see they make this special rock called a myelinite. And because it's getting stretched out, we have that shear rotation. This can produce our foliated rocks as well. Regional metamorphism is basically just as the word states. This is happening over a very large region, a very large area. This is mostly where we have two continents colliding into each other. And of course, as you have two continents colliding into each other, that's going to be an extreme amount of pressure. So that definitely creates our foliated rocks. So if you were to go hiking in the Appalachians, you would see everything from shale to gneiss okay, in, in the mountain belts and in any mountain belt, really. Then we have hydrothermal metamorphism, which as that word states, that's hot water. Um, so this mostly occurs down on the ocean floor as water recycles its way through that ophiolite sequence and gets heated up along the way. Remember, hot water dissolves things better than cool water. So as it works its way back up, it's going to be dissolving some of that mafic material. And when that water comes out at the top, remember, if this is how we get those black smokers to form that we looked at in chapter three. Um, so remember, it's not black smoke at all. It's just actually water that has a lot of dissolved mafic material in it. So obviously this is due to the effects of temperature. So this is going to produce non-foliated metamorphic rocks. Then we have our subduction metamorphism, which subduction, obviously here we have our ocean plate that's subducting beneath. Which, of course, at the lower levels, of course, you're going to see the experience of temperature. But before that, you're going to see high, high amounts of pressure. So it produces um, foliated rocks for sure, but it produces its own special brand of foliated rocks, which we call a blue schist facies. Oops, sorry about that. Then, maybe this is not going to cooperate now. Our last one we have is shock metamorphism which shock metamorphism happens when an asteroid or a comet hit the Earth. This doesn't really produce foliated or non-foliated rock. It produces something entirely different. Um, comets and asteroids can hit the Earth at 10 to 20,000 uh, miles per hour, so very quickly. 
So when they hit the earth, they tend to vaporize a lot of the rocks in the area. Um, but some of the rocks that uh, can withstand this basically turn to glass. Um, you know, it's high pressure, high temperature. And we can find a special kind of rock called shocked quartz, um, basically where it kind of melts quartz very quickly and turns it to a very dense glass. And this is actually what we find scattered all over North America as a result of the asteroid that collided uh, in at the end of the Cretaceous uh, when the dinosaurs went extinct. So how do metamorphic rocks come up to the surface? Well, you guessed it, plate tectonics. Um, so as two areas collide, as you can see here, you can get rocks that are brought up to the surface. And as that area erodes over time, your metamorphic rocks can become exposed. And as you can see in this picture, there's lots of metamorphic rocks all over the place. Anything that's in that light gray, that dark gray on this map, are your metamorphic rocks. The dark colored, metam the dark colored gray here are metamorphic rocks that are up at the surface. The lighter gray are metamorphic rocks that are there, but they're buried underneath uh, sedimentary rock. So you can see that some of this really old original material um, from when the continent started forming is still around. So this can definitely tell you about the very diverse and rich history of the continents on our planet.